Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new series I'm starting here on the channel called Build It. And the idea of the series is that we're gonna walk through how we can build various projects for macOS. Now, the first one we're gonna be doing is based on AppKit, but some future videos might involve SwiftUI or even some lower level uh, macOS details that aren't necessarily uh, too UI heavy. But basically the idea is that I wanna be able to bring you from just the conception of an idea to a full-fledged, uh, whether it be an application or a larger component, rather than just dealing with specific AppKit APIs, for example. So the very first thing we're gonna be building is a welcome window lookalike. Basically, we're gonna to try to recreate the Xcode or welcome to Xcode window that you see in front of you here. Now, um, we'll come back to talking about all the little details of this, but let's go ahead and create a new project to get us started. So macOS application, I'm gonna call this welcome window. And we're gonna be using nibs as our interface for this particular tutorial. You can feel free to try to use something else, but if you wanna follow along exactly, we're gonna be using nibs. Uh, AppKit app delegate and Swift will be the language. And we can go ahead and create this. All right, so let's go ahead and just for a second, look at the Xcode welcome window. So to do that, we can go up to Xcode window, welcome to Xcode, or we can hit command shift one, and that will bring up the welcome window for Xcode. Now, there are various sort of components to this, but we're gonna just try to break those down. So first off, I, I like to always think of this kind of as a, a high level. Anytime I'm trying to recreate something that I see or um, just mentally, I like to get a good idea of what it is uh, sort of on a high level component basis. So obviously we have a single window, right? And in my mind, if there's a window, there's gonna be a window controller to manage that. So we're gonna have sort of a window controller managing this whole window here. And then we can see that this is really broken down into two main components, right? There's this view on the right, which shows all the recently opened projects in Xcode. So that's sort of just a table view that sits on the right. We can see that there is a, a transparency or an, a visual effect view that's behind this component here. And then on the left side, we have this sort of main view that I like to call it. And it has most of the main things. You'll notice that if you uh, move your mouse into this view, right, anytime you move your mouse into the view, the close button up top and this little checkbox at the bottom will show up in the view. Notice that it doesn't actually show up over here whether that's necessarily a bug in what Xcode was trying to accomplish with that. Uh, maybe that's the case, but uh, regardless, we're just gonna try to recreate it as it stands. So uh, th yeah, so that's sort of the two main things, right? We have this sort of view on the r right uh, that manages these open recently opens. We have this view on the left, it's the main view. And those are, again, two main components that we have. So again, we have this main window, and then there's a right and left view controller that we essentially want to place into this window. And so that's what we're going to be building today is really just the basis of that. And then we'll get into some of the more uh, detailed things on each one of these views in a future video. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this project. And the first thing I'm going to do is hop over to our app delegate here. I'm going to delete this window property that exists because we're going to be making our own window controller to go along with this. I wanna go into the main menu nib and delete this window that's here. And so we should just be left with the menu bar. All right, so like I said, the first thing that we wanna do is create a window controller and that's gonna be managing the main window. So we're gonna use a subclass of NS window controller. I'm gonna create a nib with this. I'm gonna call it um, welcome window controller. All right, and we'll add that in. So now we have our welcome window controller and we have our corresponding nib file and let's go ahead and just set it up so that we can present this window um, just without any real content in it. So to make the window look very similar to the welcome window in Xcode, the first thing we need to do is enable this hide title text because there's no title text in um, the welcome window and let's just bring it up so we can kind of see the comparison here. So welcome to Xcode. And let me just click uh, as I go. So we have our transparent title bar. That's something that we want to have on this guy here. Um, we also want the 
content view to be the entire window. So if you want to place views inside of the window, basically there's going to be no tool or title bar on the window. And so we want the entire content view or the content view controller to take up the entire window space. And so to do that, we want the full size content view selected there. The other things we want to get rid of are the open and close buttons, which uh, you can see if I move this window a little bit here. So we're going to get rid of the close, the minimize, and the resize buttons. We also do not want this to be visible at launch, uh, which is kind of a weird misnomer. You might think you do, but um, we are going to manually trigger this uh, to be visible on our own. So we're going to deselect visible at launch on this as well. And that should be pretty much all the things that are required to match the window appearance. There's uh, slight differences in the content background color of these windows, but at least the, the general window, uh, aside from the color itself, will match uh, what, this one has, what this one is here. All right, um, one other thing I want to do in is set up something in this window did load. And what I'm going to do is uh, set up so that the window can be movable uh, if you move the background or if you drag on the background. So what this means is, uh, as you see this welcome window, if I drag anywhere on the background of this uh, window, you can see that it moves along. And that's what this property is going to do here if I drag the background. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our app delegate. And now we're gonna actually set up this window to controller to present itself. So uh, lazy var welcome window controller. And we're gonna go ahead and set up our welcome window controller. And to show the window, we simply just have to say show window and passing nil as the sender there. The last thing that I have to do is actually set up a initializer on this welcome window because by default, NS window controller will not pull the window from the nib file, uh, which is kind of confusing because NS view controller will, but uh, we're going to make a convenience here for doing this. And so uh, I already have this set up and it basically just looks like this. It's a convenience init where we initialize it with a window nib name matching the, and this little trick here is going to just give me this matching string. Uh, on the class. All right, and so we want to load a nib matching the name of the class, which is this welcome window controller nib. All right, so that should be everything. Let's go ahead and run this. So here we go. Here's our window. We can see that I can drag it if I click on the background and drag around. Um, obviously nothing too special, right? But the window itself does look comparable. If I pull up uh, these two, right, we, we can see that the, the, sh the shape and general details of this window are comparable. The color of the window, I don't believe actually match, but uh, we can talk about that in a later video. All right, let's get the actual setup of these two different panes going. And there's various ways that you could do this. You could set this up completely in constraints so that you add a view manually and set up the view controllers as child view controllers if you want. Um, but one approach that I have been tinkering with or I think works decently well is to actually set this up with a split view, uh, a split view controller rather. And the nice thing about a split view controller is that I can actually just embed the split view controller as the content view controller. And then we can add the two view controllers as just uh, split view components basically or split view items. And they will just present uh, automatically without me having to write the code to actually put the views inside of the content. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and make a split view controller. And this is going to be an NS split view controller. And we're just going to create it to empty. All right. And then we want to basically add some split view items. So NS split view item. And we basically want to add just general uh, view controllers. Now, um, there might be an argument to be made that we should pick either one of these, but um, because this scenario is a little reversed, right, usually if you have a sidebar on the left, uh, that's kind of the setup, right? You have the sidebar on the left and you have the content view, um, but that's not exactly what we have in this. So I'm just going to create two individual view controllers, um, but feel free to play around with those different split view item creations if you want. All right, and then uh, when we have this split view controller completely set up, I'm going to assign it to the welcome window controllers content view controller property so that it puts that split view in there. All right, now we're going to go ahead and create the two view controllers for both the 
um, the split view, or sorry, the main view and the, the recents table, basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file. I just hit Command N, make a new Coco class. And this one is gonna be an NS view controller. And we're gonna call this the main welcome uh, view controller. And we're gonna create a nib to go along with that. And then we'll go ahead and create another one. And this is going to be the recents table view controller. And maybe you have better naming conventions than me, feel free to name them whatever you feel is appropriate. All right, so now we have our two, uh, two setups here. Uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do in this one is I'm gonna go ahead and add a visual effect view. So this is in the recents table view controller nib. I'm gonna search for a visual effect view and plop that in to our view like this. All right, and we'll go ahead and set up all these constraints. And now uh, I wanna just change the material on this. So behind window is fine, but the material, um, it, it, it's kind of up to you on how you wanna present it, but uh, I think it's kind of similar to sidebar material. So we'll go ahead and set the material to be sidebar. All right, that's uh, that set up there. And now on the main welcome controller, I'm not gonna actually set up any content in this one, but what I'm gonna give it is a preferred content size. And this will just basically mean that um, it'll try to fit this particular content size if it makes sense. And so uh, we're just gonna do, let's just do a 500 by uh, 400, and that'll be the preferred content size of our main welcome view controller. Let's go back into the welcome window controller, and we're gonna add in the main welcome controller and we're gonna add in the recents table view controller. So those are gonna be two split view items or uh, two items that we have as uh, split view items. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and try and run this again to see what we get. So now we can see we get uh, a window that's looking even closer to what we had for our welcome window. So let's go ahead and open up that welcome window and we can see that the two are actually fairly comparable, right? The, the color is still off with this uh, main view, but we can see that this uh, section is quite comparable, right? The, you can see that there is transparency on, uh, you can see the content behind the recents uh, content there. Same if, if I click on this guy and I hover over different things, you can see the contents behind it as well. So whether it's the exact same material or not, I'm not sure, but um, you can see that they are relatively comparable. All right, the very last thing that I wanna do in this tutorial is show you how we can get rid of this split view uh, or the split view divider. So obviously in this one, there's really, it doesn't look like there's any split view at all. And maybe there is no split view, maybe they're manually just entering these two values or two view controllers into uh, the view hierarchy. But uh, in this section, obviously I wanna be able to get rid of this divider line and I don't want uh, there to be the option, right? to uh, try and move this. So I don't want there to be a uh, move, sort of uh, the cursor change when I hover over the divider. So to do this, it's a little bit tricky in that because we're using the split view controller, the split view controller really is in charge of the split view itself. It's the delegate of the split view and it does all the management of it. Could I try to do a completely, completely separate split view controller? Yes, I could, but I'd rather just try and subclass it. And so that's what I'm gonna do in this video. And that's one of the last things we're gonna do is we're going to subclass NS split view controller. I'm just gonna call it split view controller for lack of a better name. And we'll create that. All right, so what am I doing in this split view controller? Well. I wanna get rid of that divider. And to do that, I actually have to subclass the split view itself. And there's a, a property on there uh, that will allow me to change the divider thickness of the split view. And so that's what we need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and say final class split view. And I could put this in a different file, but uh, I'm not for the purposes of just that it's really almost internal to this, this split view. All right, um, so I'm gonna have split view and I want to override divider thickness. And basically we want it to be zero. All right, so that's not the only thing I have to do because I also want to get the cursor to hide itself. 
So to do that, there is a split view method that we have to implement to actually uh, hide that, um, that value. And the method for that is split view effective rect for drawn rect at divider at uh, that long uh, delegate method. But this, the idea of this is that you want to propose a rect that uh, if you were trying to move the split view, uh, basically what are the proposed rectangles that you could allow. But if you return zero in this, it'll actually just basically just means that I don't want anything to be an allowed uh, movement for this divider. And so uh, returning zero will actually just uh, hide the cursor over that section. All right, the very last part is that we actually need to have the split view uh, be used by the split view controller. And so to do that, we want to implement load view. And load view is uh, a general method on NS view controllers where you can override the view in which it's going to load. Uh, this one's a little weird with split view controller because it also has a split view property. Um, but what we're gonna go ahead and do is um, try to implement this. So what we can do is create the split view and we need to say that the split view is vertical. And then um, from there, we want to uh, assign the split view on um, the view or the NS split view controller itself to the split view. And then we'll call super load view. Um, and I wanted to, oops, I want to set this to be true. So a little weird, but um, that is the case for, for that there. All right, let's head back to our welcome window controller. We were just using this base and a split view controller, and I'm gonna replace that with the new split view controller subclass that I created. And let's go ahead and try to run this. So we'll run, and look at that. We don't have any divider line anymore, and the cursor doesn't show up when I mouse over it. So if I compare this window with this window, we can see that they are actually pretty comparable. The uh, the material on the, the the right here looks pretty good. Again, obviously the color is slightly off on uh, this guy, but I haven't actually figured out what the color is of uh, or how they're generating this. If it's a particular material type, uh, if you happen to know exactly what this color is, uh, you can feel free to leave me a comment or how they're generating this particular color. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave it at this point. So, what did we accomplish in this video? We talked about how we can generate a window using a window controller. In that window controller, we did uh, well. We set up the window in the nib file so that it looks the same as this welcome window. And in the window controller itself, we set up a split view so that we can embed two different view controllers side by side without having to do any of the logic that's usually involved in trying to embed a child view controller of some kind. So I actually kind of like this approach with the split view controller in that you can actually just kind of use it to embed the split views and the content uh, sizes for each of those split view components is derived by the view itself, right? So in the recents table view case, it's just gonna be kind of whatever it happens to be. Uh, if I wanted to set a particular uh, constraint on the visual effect view, I could change that, right? I can change the visual effect view to be whatever it, it might have to be. Uh, same with the main welcome window, we just said, well, I want the preferred content size to be this, and so it just kind of throws it into that size if it can. And so it's just a very nice way of saying, I really don't have to do a lot of code, right? I can just have a split view controller and it'll just lay out the two views next to each other. And I can use that as the content view there. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this first part of the tutorial. Next time, we're gonna dive into how to create one of these view controllers on the left or right. And tune in next week to find out which one. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.